Hi guys, it's your girl Steph and today we'll be talking about walking cycles. So I've been getting this question a lot, people ask me how do you do it? Where do you make it? What programs do you use? And we are gonna unravel that today. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, first we're going to open up Daz and then we are going to look for avatars or I think they call it figures in here. So they've got a few default characters you can use. I like to use Genesis 2, Genesis 3 and Genesis 8. So it's really completely up to you. Let's just use um, Genesis 2 for now. We double click. Okay. Here's our friend. So, um... Oh, God. After we've chosen our avatar, we want to export it as an FBX. So, what you want to do is export. Um, choose it in, like, whichever... Save it into whichever folder you want to put it into. So, I'm going to name this Daz. I'm going to name it Tutorial. Yeah, that should be fine. Daz Tutorial is good. Now, I remember, because we are going to bring this Daz character into Mixamo, it depends which Genesis character you use. I tend to use Genesis 2 um, for my walk cycles. I'm not quite sure if Genesis 8 works, but let me know if you guys, if you guys try Genesis 8 in Mixamo and it works, then please comment below to let other people know that it works. Okay, so once that's exported, it should go into the file that you've saved as your location. Now, the reason why we want to export it as an FBX and we want to put it into Mixamo is because I'm not very good at rigging. <laughs> and if unless you guys do proper animation rigging, animation rigging is hard. So I use a website called Mixamo where you can import your models and they've got preset animations which you can use for free as long as you've got Adobe. Okay, so we're done with Daz for now. We're gonna just minimize that and we are gonna go to Mixamo. So just search up in, in Google, you guys will find it. So Mixamo is under Adobe. If you guys got an Adobe account, feel free to sign in. Um, so we'll just log in now. Okay, once you are logged into Mixmo, you've got see all these preset animations. This is pretty much what I use for my walking cycles or um, any other any other animations that they've got. So you guys can use any of these and actually apply your FBX model to any of these. So I guess if we type into the search bar walking, we should find it. So we got a few. Which one do I use? It might be this one. Let's have a look. Female start walking. Text them walking. I think I used this one. Okay, so we've got the walking here. We want to click this button or this tick box here called in place. Right, so that means it's gonna be in place. And afterwards we want to move the overdrive down so it's a lot slower, so the movement's a lot slower, it's a lot smoother, you guys can rotate and have a look how it's, how it's walking and how it's moving. You can even tweak the arms if you want to, but I tend to leave it. So what we want to do next is upload our character, so we can do that now, and it says select character file or drop character file here. Right, so find that FBX we just exported from Daz, and we're going to drop it straight into there into that box yeah it's gonna it's gonna take a while to upload so just grab a cup of tea or a coffee and just wait for it to do its thing okay not bad okay not bad at all so this is our rigged character now press next I'm looking at the eyes, her eyes look so scary, <laughs> like she's really awake. But anyways, that doesn't really matter too much, it's the movement that we want. So this is what we are going to export out of Mixamo and what we will bring back into Daz. So let's do that. So if we go to download here in the orange button, FBX is fine with skin. Um, 30 should be fine depending on what your project is, if you want it faster or slower you can choose these. Keyframe reduction, I literally keep everything the same so we're going to press download. 
and another tea break moment. Okay, so now it's downloaded, we can go back into Daz. So I'm gonna pause this, we go back into Daz with our model here. I think if we go to pose the animate tab, it will open up this. Now I've got two viewports, but that's just my personal preference. You guys will probably just have one viewport. And actually, I learned this from Travis David's tutorial on YouTube. So if you guys haven't checked that one out already, feel free to check it out. That's pretty much where I learned this technique from. Okay, so now we want to import our FBX that we've exported from Mixmo. So just drag it in or you can import it by file import, but I'm just going to drag it on top. So you should get a pop-up box like this. So you want to change this from animation to mixmo.com and accept. And it should be here. So now we've got two of them. So to see both layers of the characters, we want to go to scene and click on the bottom layer. And now we want to go to create and it blocks from studio keyframes so what you want to do is make sure the bottom layer is highlighted so you check here it's highlighted in yellow right click in the space and create any block from studio keyframes and everything should be default boom so what we want to do now is click on it left click right click copy and we want to paste it into this one now we can get rid of this one here the previous animation of just a walking cycle and I think we could just delete it yep we can do I just press delete on my button or probably backspace now the reason why we want to combine the T pose to the walking cycle is because when you create animation or garments when you build garments in Clove 3D or Marvelous Designer, you want to make sure it's in a T pose or in A pose. So it's really important that it starts in that position before you start simulating the fabrics. So with this, we are going to just move this right next to the other one and you will see what this will do. And you can just scrub through it so it goes from T pose to walking animation. Now, the only issue is that this avatar is sliding about. It's meant to be walking on the spot, but if I just play it actually, if I just hold up, if I just play it, <laughs> and if I move this to here, you can see it's sliding about, which is not ideal. So, what we want to do to stop that is if we go to uh, here in scene, highlight it, drop down this button, go to hip, and what we want to do is go to at the top tools, join editor. So if you zoom in, you'll be able to see that there's a green gizmo here. What you wanna do is get the green one, click on it on the Y axis. You wanna bring it down. You wanna bring it down to the floor. So this is where it's good to have two viewports because you can see from the side where the ground hits. So ideally you wanna just move it so it's pretty much touching the ground here. You see this where this line is hitting and where it's walking. So that will help it, that will stop it from sliding about. And I think that's pretty much it. So if I now, if I deselect that, if I just play it, let's have a look much better already much better because it's not sliding about and then what i like to do personally because right now it's uh one second two second three second four is like nearly five i'd like it to be a lot longer just for rendering purposes and also when i loop my animation i like them to be a bit longer so i've got enough to cut because when you're making loops, you got to cut your footage in the right place. So I like to repeat it two or three times, but that's just preference. So what we can do is left click and then right click and copy and then right click and paste. And we'll do the same thing. Just shimmy up the <laughs> shimmy up the any block to to the next one. And it should hopefully loop perfectly. I think we can, we can just paste it. I think we can just paste it here again and just shimmy it up and move it next to each other. I think, no, a bit closer. I 
mean that's as close as it gets don't forget to move this tab at the top that is where it will stop the animation so once it gets to 12 around here it will stop the animation so let's just play this and have a look okay I think that's doing all right let's just check the second block yeah not bad not bad at all so now we've got a walking cycle for 12 seconds so now that we're happy with the length of the walking cycle we can now bake the keyframes so we can bake to studio keyframes here so what you want to do is right click in this gray space here bake to studio keyframes and say yes and that should be it and that is pretty much it it's so simple and we'll save it we'll export it again as fbx and this is what we will be using to create our garments in Marvelous Designer and also use to simulate in Marvelous Designer or Clo3D. So we we'll go to File, we'll go to Export, and we are going to, let's put a new one. We can say, name this as put into MD, Marvelous Designer or Clo3D, whichever, and copy that. We'll save it in this folder here so save um, everything should be fine to be honest everything is good here press accept and wait for it to do its thing right so I think it's time we jump into Clo3D d or Marvelous Designer they're pretty much the same thing right so now we're in Marvelous Designer I mean you guys can use Clo3D if you want to it's totally up to you but this process works for both so let's import it in so you guys could do file import and choose your fbx but i'm just going to drag mine in from where i saved it so i'm just going to drag it here in the 3d window i like to have it in centimeters daz studio and press ok press ok here and this is our avatar and you guys can check if the animations works. So right now we got it in a T-pose, that's great because that is what we need for building uh, like an outfit. And if you go to animation here, you can see here the red here, and that's basically the white up here, that's all the keyframes that we've baked. So you can scrub it, you can scrub it here, and that should be, that should be it. So I think I've made my walking cycle a little bit longer, but honestly, you can make your walking cycle as long as you guys like. But the most important thing is that it starts in a T-pose. So let's go back to simulation. We could throw on an outfit or we can just make an impromptu one. Let's go to rectangle. Let's rotate it. What is happening here? Preferences, gizmo, world coordinate. So you want to change it to that, so that it's locked in. Okay, cool. And move it here. What we're gonna do is quickly just cut out, uh, maybe if we go to internal ellipse, that should work. And holding shift as I'm, uh, as I'm scaling that up just to make sure it's all equal and we're gonna right click on that cut and no just cut just cut it get it out of there press delete and this should work okay we're gonna simulate boom here's our impromptu top that we've got and this should work actually at least this should work and um, what I want to do is probably make these sides a bit longer hold on let's make this side a bit longer here hold shift and, <laughs> and pull it down on one side and do the same on the other because right now it's like uneven so we'll just do that the same up here okay and simulate okay cool so we've made what would you call this guys I actually don't know we've made a a, a poncho looking thing <laughs> 
But anyways, this is just to illustrate for you guys. So what we want to do now, so after you guys made your garment, you can go into, from simulation, you can go to animation up here. And what you want to do is actually press this record button here. And what you're going to do is just wait for it to record, so another tea time break. Nice, it's finished. It has finished simulating and actually all the keyframes are baked here, so what you can do is actually just scrub through. You can scrub through it and one thing I like to do is actually replay it, but before we press the play button here, change this to real time. Press play. You can see, you can see everything animating perfectly, and it's great. So of course your garment's gonna be way better than this, <laughs> cause you know we just made this really quickly. But the whole idea is that after you've made your garment, you will basically press this record button, and it will calculate all the simulation here for you. So we go to file export, go to Alembic Ogawa and just name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it walking cycle tutorial and I think everything should be the same as in the default. I think only this one isn't the default so you can click this one if you want and you've also got a choice to include avatars. I personally don't because I don't like having avatars in most of my work but that's just personal choice, so if you guys want avatars, click that. I won't be doing that for this tutorial, but let's press OK. And for another tea break. A few moments later. Now I'm going to jump into Cinema 4D, but if you guys prefer to use Blender, Maya, 3ds Max, like feel free to use those, it's pretty much the same thing. So what we're going to do is go to File, Merge Objects, Select your walking cycle. I think I can't remember if it's millimeters or centimeters, but try both. See which one you guys like and press OK. Right, I think this is massive. I think this garment is massive, so yeah, it's massive. So what we can do is actually scale it down. We can scale our lambic down here, we could make it like 0 0.1. Let's have a look. Oh, that's tiny but then if you compare it guys if you compare it to a normal box or a cube it should be fine you can make it whatever scale you want you can make it 0 0.5 if you really wanted to personal preference guys whatever your scene size is you can use that now this is pretty low poly but that's also because I did not do not lower my particle distance in Marvelous Designer. So if you guys want less jagged lines, you see how all this jaggedness is coming out, then make sure your particle distance in Clove 3D or Marvelous Designer is smaller. Make it smaller, because that will basically subdivide all the pieces. And if we click on this, I think, yes, it works. If you press play, Look at that. What we want to do is actually extend this timeline. So I'm going to make it 300. Let's see. And that is pretty much the tutorial, guys. I mean, this is what I use pretty much for all my walking cycles. If you guys want to get rid of this jaggedness as well, there's another trick you can do in Cinema 4D, and that is the subdivision surface. It does make it a bit heavier, but already, look at that. Look at the difference. Another thing I'd also like to use is if you search, if you press Shift C on your keyboard and type in surface, cloth surface, that's what we want. Click on that. You could even put this in between and parent that to that. Yeah, you can actually add use cloth surface to add thickness. So if you want it to make it thicker, did you see what that did? Actually, no, we put it to zero. Yeah, you see that? If you make it like five, 
so it adds a bit of thickness and you can add, also add subdivisions which also makes it a lot smoother so we could I don't know let's put five for that as well it might slow down <laughs> it might slow down the piece a lot but this is the shortcut way of getting it smoother without going back into Clove 3D or Marvelous Designer. And that is the process guys, so thank you so much for watching. This is pretty much the process I use for my work with the walking cycle, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are going to use this technique and also let me know if you do. Uh, put it in the comments below, I would love to see your versions of this technique. Also let me know if you guys want to know how to texture your alembics. So there's a specific technique that I use, especially getting it from Clove 3D or from Marvelous Designer to Cinema 4D. So if you want to see that, let me know and we could make it happen. And for those who don't know, I stream every week on Twitch live. So every Thursday I am here showing my process. If you guys enjoyed this video, then you might also enjoy seeing my processes live. Also, if you guys want to hang out, I have two discords which you guys can join. There is one called 3D Wizards, which is an educational 3D community where we talk about 3D, we nerd out about 3D, and we also share our works. The other one is a personal art discord where I usually use it for my Twitch streams, but also it's just a place where I can share most of my art for those who are interested in my work. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in my next video.